invite everybody to please stand up. We are going to study, uh, we'll be on uh, Matthew chapter 6. Let us read the whole chapter. Don't worry, I will not go verse by verse, but we are going to uh, tackle some verses from here and see what God will teach us in, in our life. Okay, so let, we're going to read the whole chapter. We're going to read this responsibly. And in verse 34, we're going to read uh, all together. Okay, verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth. That thy heart may be secret, and thy Father will be secret, so shall thy heart be open. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners, in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face. Lay not up for yourselves uh, treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, 
Therefore, take note of saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you altogether. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, this afternoon. We are so thankful because once again, O oh God, we are going to uh, feast on your word. We are going to study, we are going to uh, enjoy, and please help us that be the, for you the one to be glorified in our midst, even the, uh, to the life of your servant, O oh God, for without you I cannot do anything. Holy Spirit, praying, O oh God, I beg you, be the one to guide me and be the one to bless thy people through thy words, and be the one to be exalted in our midst, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... Uh, I will be on this chapter, but we are just going to uh, summarize some verses here and we're going to uh, be focusing on verse 33 because uh, most of Christians, especially when they, uh, when they study Matthew 6.33, it, it will start from verse 24 until, until 24. But here we're going to study the motive of this chapter while Jesus is uh, uh, doing the Sermon at the Mount. So here we're going to see the blessing of God's Word. We're going to, uh, uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit and by through God's Word, we will be corrected or we may be encouraged through this uh, uh, preaching by the, for the glory of God. And by the way, I just want to thank God for uh, His faithfulness in our lives and uh, especially the, the past 2020. Uh, thanking God. I hope we are not... the well, I hope we are not one of those people who are so bitter with 2020. I hope we are not so bitter because a lot of things happen. A lot of people are cursing. From the YouTube, you will see they are cursing 2020. And they are so angry because of the things happened. Of course, it is, it is not easy for us to lose someone that we love or something that we lose in our life. But a lot of people are so angry with this, with last year, with 2020, because these people... We should not be, be uh, wondering why, because they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't have hope. But for us as a Christian, we have a living hope, especially when the Word of God teaches us. Actually, we are going to study in Matthew 6.33. We are going to, to, uh, to tackle about not be worrying. Don't, don't be anxious about the things that we need in our life. But the truth is that as a Christian, we are not excused in all of this. We, are, we experience these things because we are still in this world. Though we are not in, of this world, we still experience these things in our life. But one thing for sure, that one day, we are going to meet our Lord Jesus Christ, and that is our future. Something that is 101% that we are going to enjoy everlasting life. But here, there is something that we need to do. Like the things that we experience, we are not excused. Actually, even pastors, they died because of the COVID. But I believe it is not because of the COVID. I believe it is the will of God happened in their life. So it may be bitter in a way because we, could, we cannot pattern the mind of God. We cannot understand. We cannot reach the thinking of God because we have a limited mind. And sometimes we are bitter. And in, in those bitterness, sometimes we go away with that. And we also are getting hurt because we are not doing the will of God in our life. Especially here in, in Matthew chapter 6, we will see, uh, especially, let me just go, I will not go verse by verse, but I will just mention the verse and then we'll see what is, the, we're going to summarize this. But I will be concentrating in verse 20 or 33 and, in, uh, and before the, the previous verses. Here we can see, if you, I don't know if you have noticed this in Matthew chapter 6, if you're going to notice it, in verse 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right? But if you're going to study the whole chapter, it seems that, wait, well, there is giving, there is prayer, there is, there is forgiveness, there is, what do you call this, uh, fasting. But if you're going to study it, you will see the contrast. What the Lord is teaching His disciples that day. 
And even now, we're going to see it, what the Lord is teaching in our life. If you will go to verse 1 and 4, I'm not going to read them. In, in verse 1 and 4, you will see about, it's about giving. And when you give, it says, when you give alms, don't, be, be by, don't do it by see, by, for the people to see you. What does he said? When you give, let the Father know it. Let the one who will see you, see you when you give to someone. Let him be glorified in all of this. Because a lot of people, they give, especially right now, uh, to be honest with you, I am sad with, why, with what do people in social media are doing. If you are aware of this, you will see a lot of people doing good things, right? In, in Facebook. What they are doing is they are giving, they are helping people. That's good. It's not bad. Please don't misunderstand me. It is a good thing to help people. But the sad thing is this. These people are giving them, some of them for them to be for their page to grow. Maybe. But the, 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 the sad thing is that these people having what they need without hearing the word of God. And, and, the, and, the, and their focus is focusing on, on those people who do good to them. If you're going to be aware of that. A lot of people doing that because they just want to, they feel good when they give. Right? That's why Jesus said, when you give, don't give by, by, by showing people. You do it for the Father. Because when you do this, you will have your reward. But if you're going to read the, the chapter, Jesus, how many times he said, they already have their reward. If you're not doing for God, you already have your reward. And you do it for God, you will already have your reward here and not in heaven. In, in verses 5 to 13, Jesus taught about prayer. And you will see here, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, but he's praying, he's tell, teaching them to pray to the Father and not to be seen of men. Because Jesus said, a lot of here, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they are praying, being seen by people. But Jesus said, if you pray, you go to your closet, you go to your room, you close your door, you pray there, you talk to your father alone. So that the people, oh, because when people see, oh, this man is spiritual because he's praying. Which is, the Lord is not glorified in that. And you will see the contrast. Jesus said, when you pray, not to be seen by men. But you pray alone in your room. You pray to your father. And in, uh, in 14 and 15, it is about forgiveness. You're going to look at it. 14 and 15, about forgiveness. Forgive because God forgave us. You see the contrast there? We can only be forgiven by God if we forgive those people who sin against us. Again, you will see the contrast there. And in verse 16 and 18, it is about fasting. You will see the fasting. When you fast, don't be like, it says here, don't be like those who pretend, those who are pretenders. They are pretending. What, does they, what do they do on that time when they fast? They will not comb their hair. They will have a, like a, they will have like a dirty face. And when they ask, oh, why, are you, why do you look awful? Why do you look that way? Oh, I'm sorry because I'm in a fasting. But, but, but Jesus said, when you do that, you comb your hair, you put oil on your head, you put pamada, you put gel, you make up yourself, and then you fast, not, not being known by any people, because our Father sees what we are doing. Verse 19 and 21, look at this, laying up treasures, it says, lay treasure there in heaven, because no one can steal or destroy because our Father is already there. Here, the things that Jesus is showing us, here, if you will, if you will uh, lay up treasure here, it can be stolen, can be taken by those people who have a bad interest. But here still, Jesus is saying the contrast in what happened in laying up our, our treasure. Because when we lay our treasure in heaven, no one can steal. Because there is no, tawag don? Mandurukot in heaven. There is no robber in heaven. And we know that. Verse 19 and 21, oh no, sorry, verses 22 and 23 about the eye. If you are going to study what is that mean, at least we can see and we can summarize is that it teaches us to have a singleness or purpose on looking. 
looking right at its object. So, especially in this world, who are we looking at? Sino bang ating talaga, who are we really trusting in our life? That when we are in trouble, we are in problem, who are we looking at? As a Christian. But if we, let us go in, let me just read these verses from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 to 27. Look, Proverbs 24 to 20, 4, 25 to 27, Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. That it teaches us, the Bible says, what does it say in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible teaches us to only look unto Lord, to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is easy for us, I'm telling you, it is easy, very easy for us to be misled if we are not focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, a small problem in our life, if we are going to focus on that, Jesus, because of that problem we are, where we are focusing, he can be erased in our I'm not saying it can be erased uh, uh, in, in a way that is uh, totally, what I'm trying to say, we will be misled. We, uh, we may be, we may be uh, defocused on the things that God is telling us to do. So here, the Bible teaches us to continue to uh, to focus our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Here you can see in verse, in verse 24, all of a sudden the Lord says, No man can serve two masters, provided he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Here you can see the Lord said, in those things that we have read from verse 1 to 20, uh, uh, 27, we can see that there is a contrast there. If you will be a selfish people, you will do it, all those things, only for yourselves. Those are the things that you are serving. If we serve ourselves, we will be in trouble. That is what the Lord Jesus is, is saying. But if we focus our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, He will be the one to help us. All of these things will not be a problem for us. I'm not saying we will not have problem. But imagine if we are, our life is focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord hates that. We know that our God is a jealous God. He don't want other God in our life. But sometimes there are other gods in our life. Though sometimes we are not, though sometimes we are not worshiping idols, but deep within our hearts, there is a God that cannot be thrown away by God because you, are the, you have decided to let him reside in your life. Those are the things that problems us. That's why the Lord says, no man can serve two masters. If you are going to analyze and if you are going to put it in a way, paraphrase this, the Lord Jesus said, no, just me, just look at me, only me, where well, we can count on him. People will say that. A lot of people will make promises. We know that. A lot of people will make a lot of promises and they will say, I will do this, I will do that. But you know what? The promises are meant to be what? To be broken. Because people themselves are broken without the Lord Jesus Christ. But for us, the Lord Jesus Christ promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. This is something that uh, we can count on, that we can hold on in our life. He says, the Therefore, in verse 25, it says here, but before that said, saying that make up your mind, no one shall, can serve two masters. In our life, we experience hardship, right? But we will not love evil or sin. In our life as a Christian, we cannot, we cannot uh, avoid having problems in our life, especially right now. Uh, one of the problems, our problem because of loss of job, no work, and maybe these things allowed by God for us to continue to hold on unto him. But for a Christian who has the Lord Jesus Christ in their life, just like Pastor Joel said this morning, if we are really, really saved, 
a true servant, a true, per, a true per, a, a person who really accepts the Lord in his life, he will not love evil or love sin in his life. We all commit mistakes, we all commit sin. But imagine this, but, but look at this, we will not enjoy those things in our life. Why? Because we always feel that war in, inside of us. God, because God is not being glorified. In verse 26, it says here, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. Make, the Lord giving us an example again. No reap, no gather barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? If you're going to look at what the Lord is giving us, it is so easy to understand, right? It is really too, it is easy to understand. But look at this. It is easy to understand, but maybe the hardest things that we are applying in our life. If you're going to see it, it is easy to understand. Sometimes it is hard to live. In verse 27, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? I don't know if you are familiar with cubit. I don't know who's familiar with the cubit. Cubit is around 18 inches long. From the end of your elbow to the tip of your middle finger, that is one cubit. That is how long. It's saying, the Lord says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit? Imagine that, one cubit. Pag ina, that, you, if you will add one cubit on me, I will be this tall. Kung panda ka, medyo lalaki ka pa ng kote. Ako, basta tayo. Maybe Brother Jeremiah will be, be uh, one cubit will be added to him. Maybe he will <laughs> reach the, the ceiling by hand only. So he says, when you, when you worry, you cannot add anything to this. But uh, let us read this in Luke chapter 12, verse 25 to 26. Look at this. And which of you, Luke 12, 25 to 26 said, and which of you with, with taking thought can add to his statue one cubit? In verse 26, if he then be not be able to do the things which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Let me read it in Tagalog, Father me. Kung hindi nga ninyo magawa kahit ang lalong maliit, bakit kayo nababali sa tungkol sa mga baga, sa ibang bagay? For us, for the Lord Jesus Christ, this is very simple. But for us, we can never do that. But for the Lord, it is the least thing. It is the least thing. He said, that's what's written in the Word of God. And if that thing is the least thing that you cannot do, why take thought of the... Why take thought? Bakit kayo nagugulumiyanan? Why are you bothering yourself with all those things? In verse 28, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Look at the, the lilies of the field. And in, in verse 29, And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. We know Solomon, right? How rich, how powerful, how wise he is. But the Lord says, not even Solomon was able to wear this beautiful, this kind of cloth that he can wear. He, he was not able to do that. In verse 30 it says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? The Lord said, he, if he's giving importance to this flower, to these lilies of the field, for only one day, saying, how much more us, his children? If you're going to look at it, that what he's saying, in verse 32, after all these things, do the Gentiles seek, Something that we need to see, he said, For all of these things do the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The, he says, the Father already know what you need. But the, what do we need to do if the Father already know these things? Later on, we're going to see that. Do you know that unbelievers, they don't have light at the end of the tunnel? When it was mentioned for all these things, do the Gentile six. Why? 
Because the, the very life, the very life that they have, the, the enjoyment, the happiness that they, they can have is the material things. Because they cannot see the things behind on those blessings that we can see. For us, we can see these things because God had promised this to us. But sometimes we are being bitter because the unbelievers know. Just like Pastor Joel said, hindi nga tayo dapat mag-compare. Because what we have in our life is everlasting life. But these people, Jesus saying, for all these things, do the gentle seek. Because their happiness, their joy, enjoyment is only here. They don't have the enjoyment and the happiness that we can have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the things at least we can see that. But what is the answer? The Lord says, but seek your first. If you're going to analyze from 1 to 32, the Lord is saying, no, this is what I'm trying to say. Just put me first in your life. By the way, the title is Put God First. The Lord said, but put me first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. This is something that we need to see. The Lord said, in all of these things, like saying, no need to, you don't have to problem all these things. I will just add them to you. The Bible says it will be just added unto us. But the main thing that we need to do is to put God first in our life. And if we are going to think and ask ourselves, are we putting God first in our life? All of us. It is a question that we need to answer. And we need to make a decision. Just like Pastor John. Even this, it is a personal decision. What is your decision now? Are you going to put God first? You know, especially right now, a lot of people are making New Year's resolution. But all New Year's resolutions are selfish. They will not eat this so that they will not become fat. They will do this so that they will become rich. Or they will do this because so that they will become beautiful. They will do this so that they will become handsome. Those are the New Year's resolution. It is for the self. But the Lord says, imagine if we are putting God first in our life. What will happen to us? Imagine this. Sometimes we don't have a thing. We, wala tayo minsan. We don't have things. But still we have the peace of God in our life. And that's the thing that we need to, to, be, to be joyful about. But the Lord says, actually, it is, it is a command for us to seek God first in our life. It is a command for us to put God first in our life. Let me just give some verses and compare them. And then I'll be, I, will be, uh, I will end this. Let us go to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Verse Chronicles 11 and 12. It says here, and God said to Solomon, in verse 11, Because this was in thine heart, and thou wast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I made thee king. Verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Okay? The Lord says, okay, this is what you have asked. I will grant. I will give it to you. And I will give riches, wealth, honor, such as one of the kings said, had that had been before thee, neither shall thee, there any after thee, have the like. Because Solomon put God first in his life, if you're going to have study the verse, it is God voluntarily give those things that Solomon did not ask. God gave it. But what did Solomon do? He glorified God. He put God first. He think what God, what the things that he must do, must glorify God. And because of that, it's like automatic, okay, Solomon, because you did not ask these things, even the the life of your enemies or whatever, I will voluntarily give them to you. It's like God is saying, I am glorified with what you ask me. Because you put me first, I will give you these things. And we can see the principle from there. That if you are going to put God first in our life, no need to worry. It's just that 
just like I have said, sometimes when we read in Matthew 6.33, it is easy to read, but sometimes hard to live. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 21, or let's, let's go first, in uh, verse 4 and 5. Sir, Mika, can you? Uh, Leviticus 4 and 5 first. It says here, And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Mo. 25, Sir, Mika. Okay, 25, 4. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of the rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard, that which groweth of its own accord to the accord of thy harvest. Thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thine, the, thine vine and, uh, and rest. For it is a year of the rest, a year of rest unto the land. Here the Lord is telling the, the, the Israelite, you put the land into the rest. You will not do that, you will not do anything. You let, you let the land rest. But look at their uh, reaction in verse 20, verse 20 until 21. It says here, And if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, no gather in our increase. Lord, if we are not going to plant in the seventh year, anong kakainin namin? What are we going to eat? Because the Lord commanded them not to sow, not to do anything. Let the, the land put in rest. Don't do anything. But if they will do that, look at verse 21. And I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. If they did not listen to God, if they did not put God first in their life, they will not going to experience that three years of blessing. But what they need to do is to, to put the land on rest on the seventh year. Parang, anong kakanin namin, Lord, kung di kami magtatrabaho? But the Lord says, you follow what I am trying to tell you. At the sixth year, I will bless you. God provided. Do you think if they followed God, they will be able to, to have that three years of blessing to them? I think. Let us go to Proverbs chapter 9. This is very, uh, cha cha sorry, chapter 3. Ito po yung controversial sa Pilipinas. Proverbs 3, 9, 10. It says here, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. This is what they are using for the first fruit to give the whole month of salary. But, do you, do you think we can honor God by giving? Not all giving, God is being glorified. And we know that. If you will go to Psalm 50, we see that they are giving something to God that God is not accepting. Until and unless you have a right heart to give to God, He will not be honored. First Corinthians thirteen three it says here, and though I bestow all my goods, Paul says, or oh, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. So here they are using the word honor to to give. But watch that says in verse 10. In verse 10 says, So shall thy verse be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with thy new wine. The word honor here means to put God first. In everything that they have, it says in verse 9, with all the substance and with, all, with the first fruit of all the, their increase, they must put God first. Because you can put all your substance and your increase to God without loving and, and giving in the right way, God will not be honored. But if we will put God first in our life, God will be honored. And when God is honored, He will be the one to bless us. You know, all of us, we need blessing. Yes, of course, we need, we need blessing in our life. But the things that we need to do in our life is to put God first. If we really want to honor God, 
you put him first. Because a lot of Christians mistakenly doing this. They are thinking when they give to God, when they put money on the basket, they think they can glorify God even without a right motive. We cannot. We can only honor God when we put him first. Because when we put God first, even our motive will be corrected by God alone. First Timothy chapter 4, chapter 4 verse 8. It says here, For bodily exercise profited a little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. It says here, bodily exercise, it will profit us little. Why? Because the things that we will do for our body here, it will only stay until you are alive. But it says here, but godliness. What godliness means? But if we put God first in our life, we will put him first. All the things that we'll be, we are going to do, it will be profitable. What it does, having promise of the life that now, that now is, and of that which is to come. If we are going to put God first, the, all the things that we are going to do in this world will, be, will still remain until in eternity. But the things that we do for our body, it will only last until we are alive. If we do bodybuilding, yes, you will, your muscle will grow. But until you are alive, Bill. But if we put God first, if we will follow the will of God in our life and do the things that He wants us to do, we will see all those rewards in heaven. And we are going to enjoy them in our life. And that is what God is putting in our life, to put him first. And it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What does really the, the verse that it says? It says here, Don't mind those things. Mind me, and I will take care of you. That is the very simple meaning of John 6, uh, Matthew 6.33. Don't mind those things. Sometimes we are focusing on, our, on those things in our life. But the Lord says, you focus on me. You mind me. And I will be the one to help us. In verse 34, if you are going, going to see in verse 34, a lot of hardcore warriors. These are hardcore warriors. Why a hardcore warrior? That even the future is a problem to them. That's why the Lord said, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Take no thought for the morrow. For the morrow, what, that, what Jesus said, For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. In short, let problems, problems you. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sapat na yung ng problema natin ngayon. Don't mind that thing, those things. Because God can help us. In all of these, these things, we can see the thought of Matthew chapter 6. The Lord is, gave us all this example. But in short, there is one thing God is saying in our life. You put Him first. Amen. Don't mind those things. You pray, you put God first. You give, you put God first. When you fast, you put God first. With your wealth, you put God first. With the things that we need, put God first. No, all of us, we worry, right? Just like uh, Preacher Wilson said this morning, we are warrior. But imagine the result of a life putting God first in our life. You know what? The problem is that the reason why sometimes we had conflict because the other one is putting God first and the other one is putting the other way. And we can, that's why we have problem in our life. For us to be, especially right now, kahit ilan lang po tayo, let me speak in Tagalog, kahit ilan lang po tayo, if we are going to put God first in our life, imagine what will be the result in this church. Imagine what God will do. It's not something that just I'm saying, sinasabi ko lang para for you to feel good. No, this is the promise of God. If you're going to look Ma uh, Matthew 6.33 and all these things shall be added, it will be only added. But the very thing that we need to do in our life is to put God first. Let's all stand up and let's pray.